Hey, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Websites, online stores, marketing tools, and analytics. It's got everything you need to build your online portfolio and get your business going. Stay tuned until the end of the video to find out more. Today on Spotlight, I bring you X Zodiac. This was brought to my attention by my good friend Jason. So Jason, if you're listening in, I appreciate this suggestion, man. Thank you. I've actually went on Twitter not too long after uh, recording this, asking for future Spotlight suggestions. But if you don't have a Twitter account, by all means, uh, feel free to leave a comment suggesting something I can give a Spotlight to. Demos, early access, all that. Uh, I don't always have time to crank out like versus videos so many times in a week, so sometimes I gotta keep it simple. Uh, that said, this is X Zodiac, an up-and-coming Kickstarter game that went live a little over a day ago, and believe it or not, it already met its initial goal, so Wundaba. Happy to the uh, happy <laughs> for the creator, but uh, let's dive into their page as I'm getting started here. Again, as I said earlier, uh, last week when I was doing the Beautiful Paper Smile Spotlight. Uh, spotlights have been retooled a bit, where it's not so much me playing the game as I'm talking. It's, these are more post-commentary. If you for watch Brain Scratch commentaries, uh, you pretty much know exactly how that works. I'm just giving you my thoughts on something that I already sat down and recorded earlier in the day. So, uh, let's go to the X Zodiac Kickstarter page, and let's get a synopsis, let's get an overview. What exactly is happening here? So, X Zodiac is a fast paced rail shooter with a stylized look reminiscent of early 90s 3D games. Yeah, I mean, you look at this and you already see the Star Fox parallels. I think, I'm pretty sure everybody that's played this has mentioned Star Fox in some capacity. Maybe one or two may, might have mentioned Cybermorph on the Atari Jaguar. <laughs> but, you know, in, in a lot of ways, you can see X Zodiac. If Star Fox was, I don't know, ported over to the Atari Jaguar and it had a little more time to polish but it didn't have to worry about like the five frames per second or the obnoxious draw distance or the slowdown and all that. Uh, so <laughs> people might be mentioning Cybermorph more than uh, you might be used to hearing. But anyway, let's continue on. So uh, you join protagonist Q as she fights to free the worlds of the Sanzaru star system, overrun by the intergalactic terrorist organization known as Zodiac. Uh, retro, colorful, low poly visual style, 12 main levels plus secret areas and side, uh, side pathways. That's kind of in parentheses there. Multiple routes to complete the game. Major bosses at the end of each level, each piloted by a member of the Zodiac and a 16-bit style soundtrack by is this plus tech it's all caps there combining FM and wavetable synthesis and yeah I gotta say like off the bat I really uh, I really enjoy this game's sense of energy which first, first off uh, this what I'm playing right now is the demo available on the Kickstarter website so it costs nothing to play if you're interested in playing this after watching this video first I appreciate you watching the video thank you very much for your time but if you're interested in playing this game for yourself see what you're getting yourself into uh, I can leave a link to the Kickstarter page in the description below you'll probably see it beneath the Squarespace ad there so as I was saying as soon as you begin I was just loving how excited this game made me feel could be the retro graphics in combination with the kinetic soundtrack this game is uh, trying to harken back to a early 90s, mid 90s aesthetic or feeling, and you you kind of it kind of hits you in the face as soon as you start. I mean, you got the really got the really dazzling colors. I mean, it's it's a very simple looking game, uh, no doubt, but you know the, the the ship radiates a very vibrant energy. The boss, besides having the obvious you know fuck me lights, you know shoot here, idiot. They're, they're all just all over the place, and uh, I, I like it. I, I like that sense of energy. You know, you, you got your rogue squadrons. You got, I'll, I'll mention Cybermorph again, because God knows that game <laughs> had no color palette whatsoever. That game was pretty bleak, <laughs> looking back. But no, man, it's like, this game is, from what I got at first glance, was what if Star Fox had a child with Radiant Silver Gun on the Sega Saturn? I, that's kind of a kind of an odd comparison because Radiant Silver Gun was more of a top-down shooter. It was a really chaotic top-down shooter, but that's kind of what I got at first glance. And, uh, you know, also the energy just kind of reminds me of Treasure, like uh, Treasure-developed games like Gunstar Hero, Dynamite Heady, and, you know, I, I am always down for that kind of energy because I, I, I love I love games that, like, get me hooked at the start because I want to get hooked at the start. I want... I want to be able to say, oh, this, I think I'm going to like this. 
Because, I mean, that's what it's all about for me with video games, man. I play video games to have a good time. Saying this, there's multiple ways I can get a good time from a video game, but you know, sometimes I feel like I want to be a kid again. I want to just sit back. I just want to shoot things. I just want to shoot things that are, like, wobbling back and forth, shooting missiles at me, whether it be a scorpion or a giant centipede. And watch them explode like that. That's really cool. So the demo available has two levels available from the start. I, I forgot the name of the planets already because, again, I just I just played this at the time of recording this. And in terms of what you can do uh, control-wise, it's not that much different from Star Fox, really. In fact, it's, it's almost one-to-one -one the same with what you can do. Uh, when you start the game off, you can even go to the options menu. You can invert the Y axis if you don't like up being down, down being up. If you want it to normal controls, you can do that as well. Although, uh, the options menu is a little confusing because invert Y axis is disabled by default, which I thought, oh no, no, I can't have that. I gotta have that enabled because I want I want down is up and up is down because that's the way I like controlling my flight games. But I went and enabled that, but it, that made up is up and down is down. So maybe, uh, I don't know if I, would, I just read that wrong <laughs> and uh, something was just not the way it was labeled as, but uh, I have to leave that disabled to make down as up as up as down. So a yeah, little, little small thing there. But in terms of what the ship can do, I mean, you fire with the... I'm using an Xbox 360 controller for this because that's what I always use for playing games on the computer. Uh, X is shoot. You have, a, you have a boost button. It's called thrust in this. And you have a break button. And you can also uh, tilt your ship left and right. Uh, to get through narrow corridors if you want to avoid obstacles coming your way. If you double tap the bumpers, you will do a barrel roll or uh, an aileron roll, to be more accurate. I hope I pronounced that right, by the way. And much akin to Star Fox 2 and Star Fox 64, if you hold down the shoot button, you can lock on to multiple enemies at once. If you look, look at the uh, lock-on cursor, you'll see a number there. It starts at three. That's the maximum amount of enemies you can lock on at once. But as you proceed through the stage, you can get power-ups. Uh, one being, oh, there's, there's three total. One's the laser, which I'm grabbing right now, which is twin blasters. Gotta love it. I absolutely love twin blasters. Just wrecks everything as long as you're careful. Uh, there's also just basic repair kits. You're going to be taking damage, and uh, you certainly will be taking damage. This game kicked my ass the first time because I was not... Again, I, I see Star Fox, but the energy is like, ooh, it's like in your face. So I had to adjust to that. Like, okay, it's a Star Fox if it ran well, and I have to remember that. And the last power up you can pick up are missiles. That, that basically increases the number of enemies you can lock on with your your homing shot, basically. And you want to collect as many of those as possible because the homing the homing shot rocks in this game. Like it really does. Like you got to get swarms of enemies. They come in like groups of four or five at times. Sometimes they like throw like six or seven at you. I'm not sure if it was this stage or like the later half of the uh, other stage. Look right here, actually. You got, got like six of them right there. And the more missile upgrades you got in here, you can lock on to all of them and just blow them out of the sky at once. And you're going to need to do that because it, you can get easily swarmed, you know, lose a lot of shield at once. And you don't have all the repair kits in the world to make up for that. No, you got you to actively try at points, you know, to make it over there. And uh, like I said before, you have a boost and you have a break button and you have to... Uh, use those strategically at some points to maybe get through an obstacle that might be closing down you. Uh, the first stage, as you saw earlier, had these windmills, and you can either uh, boost through them to get under them before they fall on top of you, or you can use the brake to slow down, let them fall safely, like, in front of you, which I think is what you have to do when you're fighting the scorpion boss. He has these long-ass arms, and he breaks the windmills as he's going by, and if you don't use the brake button, uh, they're just, they're just all going to fall on top of you. And you're just going to lose so much shield. That that happened to me on a, a test run you, you're not seeing here. Uh, you, I guess you can consider these like my best runs, really. But man, the boss fights. Like, the boss fights in this game are, are, are really cool. Like, they're, they're so promising. Again, I, I, I just love... Uh, again, it's, I can't say it enough. I love the sense of energy that these bosses invoke because I, I love things when they're in your face. And it's like, all right, it's like, it's me against you. It's time to, it's time to dance. Let's mosey. And uh, I, actually, I find this boss easier than the Scorpion one, um, actually, because it's, the ho the lock-on stuff really does most of the work for you. It's really obvious where to shoot things. And uh, I figure that because I have twin blasters, it'll take less time for me to kill them using just manual shots rather than just locking on. Well, you know, if you want to turn your brain off, you can just use the homing shot. And... 
maybe at some point later down the road, uh, when the game is fully released, you, know, you might have some bosses that probably take advantage of that kind of play style. It's like, oh, you're the kind of guy that likes to like, home in on everything, right? Well, what if we had like a boss that had like multiple targets, but if you shot one accidentally, it like blows up in your face. So it's like, no, you have to carefully pick your targets. Some other thing. I can see this kind of game like challenging you in that way because again, the homing shot rocks. Like it really does. For like fodder, it is imperative that you use it all the time. And for bosses this early on, it's really helpful too. But I, again, this is the kind of game I can see being one of those where eh, maybe you shouldn't rely on it too much. And then you know, we'll see where we go from there. I was so close to finishing that boss right there, too. I unfortunately, got to do one more cycle. But we took care of all the segments, so it can't do its missile attack. Uh, it can't do the other missile attack, too. So it's just doing this right here. And that's it. That's the end of it right there. The colors of this game uh, look really promising, too. The, the color palette in general. I like the Aurora Borealis in the back of that one. Again, the game is going for a more retroactive look, which is nothing new. I mean, a lot of... Uh, indie games, uh, Kickstarter or otherwise, try to invoke that sense of nostalgia from that time, uh, either because maybe it's easier to create, <laughs> or it's because you got these developers who, who grew up with that sort of thing, maybe they feel uh, there isn't enough of this specific genre to celebrate, you know, because old school games, uh, normally when I think of that, uh, I like to think of like uh, old school platformers and such, but maybe I'm not looking in the right places, but I don't really see many uh, games that try to retroactively call back to like Star Fox or like those vector graphic shooter games you saw on arcade machines in movie theaters back in your youth. You know, uh, but again, maybe I'm looking at the wrong spot. You know, so uh, one thing I'm trying to show off here is that so this game has two visual modes. It has a retro mode and it has a high res mode. I figured, okay, I'll show off high res mode one time for this video and unfortunately I ended up not doing much with it because uh, I'm not sure if this was my PC maybe this is something with the demo entirely as you can see right here uh, high res mode causes the game to stutter like every second like every other second you can, you can see it right there it's like it momentarily pauses for like a few frames and it didn't take very long for this to disorient me I couldn't continue playing the game with this. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue playing for like maybe like 20 more seconds here before I decide to opt out and go back to retro mode. But uh, I tried tried different resolutions. I tried turning off VSync and I tried changing aspect ratios because this game also lets you choose between a 4:3 ratio or a 16 a widescreen ratio basically in case you don't uh, you don't like the limited viewpoint uh, even if it is a retro style game. I tried a lot of things, and unfortunately, high res just continued to stutter throughout. I thought maybe, okay, maybe it's just because I'm running the game along with my capture software, because I like to switch between XSplit and OBS when I'm recording games off my PC, because it's just easier for that for me. Uh, normally, if I have one problem with one software, I switch to the other, and the issue's fixed. But both times, uh, the game would stutter on both occasions, so I like to think that it's something with the game. Not necessarily my PC because my PC is usually good about running games like that. Uh, even you know, it's, I, I'm, I'm due for an upgrade, but it, you know, it's still pretty good for running these kind of games. So I don't know. So maybe I might be the I might be the minority that I might be just unlucky. It could be it could be my computer, but I like to think it's the game. <laughs> Please tell me it's the game. <laughs> Play the X Zodiac demo right now and try and run high res and let me know if the game stutters for you as well. Like drop a comment and let me know it's not just me. Or you can go to my Twitter at some call me John and let me know if the game stutters on high res mode too. So because I would like to know that. Please don't tell me it's my computer. <laughs> I already got folks on my shot saying the seven tires of you saying it's like, man, your PC is a piece of shit. Like, if you didn't turn my computer at all, it's like, no, man, it's when I'm running the game with the capture software. <laughs> That's why the damn thing peaked. <laughs> uh, no other shot take game did that. Anyway, I digress. I'm showing one more level here with widescreen support, and uh, this is like, this is actually true widescreen. It's not like it, it's not as if the game stretches out to a 16:9 ratio. No, it, you just see more of the screen on the left. So if you want to see more of your surroundings at once, you might want to stick to widescreen because, I mean, this is the year 2020. Widescreen is uh, standard now. You know, 
It's a retro game, but that doesn't mean your TV has to be retro. Although I'd I, I would love to see what this game would look like on a CRT. <laughs> you use the retro style on a CRT, and there you go. That's high res with none of the stutter. <laughs> there you go. I just found a solution to the problem I mentioned earlier. But yeah, uh, this is going to be the last thing I show off today because I wanted to show off like one final run on the widescreen mode. Let you know that you know I, I, after taking some time to uh, get a feel for the controls and get a feel for the mechanics, I really enjoyed this. Like, I really ended up liking this, and I'm probably going to... The game has already reached its goal, but I'm probably going to back this myself because I, I love to show support for games that have a ton of potential, and this is something I'm looking forward to big time. So, again, Jason, if you happen to be listening, thanks again so much for bringing this to my attention because I, I would have I missed this earlier. But I'm sure within time someone would have mentioned it because I mentioned how much I really like Star Fox. Well, Star Fox, like, 64 and all that. And this game is pretty much Star Fox without being Star Fox. Because <laughs> that's the age we live in now. It's like when when AAA companies or just old-time old developers neglect franchises or don't give them nearly the same attention as they used to, you got to rely on indie projects to replicate and, you know, that feel of that franchise without it actually being that franchise. Exodia could very much be the bloodstain of Star Fox games. <laughs> it's like three different franchises I just mentioned there. But you know, that, again, is just what we live in nowadays. But I don't really give a fuck. As long as, if it's fun, that's all I really care about. But maybe I'll, I'll raise an eyebrow if there's like other characters in this game. It's like, it's not Fox, it's Zox. You know, it's or, or it's Bauko. Or Whippy. <laughs> Whippy the Toad. <laughs> like, okay. And that's, uh, that's a little derivative. But yeah, okay, that's X Zodiac. The demo is available on their Kickstarter page. Again, I'll leave a link in the description below. I very much enjoyed what I played here on this free demo. Two levels, more than enough to get you accustomed to what the game is going to be about. And when it finally does get released, I will be more than happy to do a versus video on this. Now, that's just one of the reasons why I'm glad to bring Spotlight back in this format, uh, especially if I'm doing games for demos or early access and what have you, because I feel uh, Spotlight videos benefit the most from those because I mean, it's kind of the entire point. You're, just, you're bringing attention to something that looks like it has a lot of promise. And then later down the road, I give it a, an eventual review and it's kind, of like a, it's kind of like a story being told. You see the beginning with a Spotlight and then it ends with a versus video. You see how much opinions change for, for better or worse. It's a progression. It's, a, it's, it's pretty fun to think about. That's it. Before we end today's video, I do want to drop a thank you to Squarespace for the sponsor. As I said before, my friend Ben and I have been doing 24-hour gaming marathons to raise money for Extra Life and the Children's Miracle Network for close to six years now. Though Extra Life itself has a fine enough donation page, I wanted something a bit more personal, something that can show you the schedule, potential raffle prizes, a little history about us, Ben and I banging the bongos, all that stuff. And thanks to Squarespace, I'm able to make that a reality. The website is still under construction. I'm not expecting it to be ready until, like, late summer. But the user interface and that lovely assistant on the right side of the screen make creating the site incredibly comfortable, and that's why I like it. I'm a man of very simple tastes. I need my hand held for these kind of things, and a simple website is well within the realms of what you can do. But there's so much more here for those looking to get started with their business. Appointment scheduling if you're doing online classes, traffic overview to give you the insight you need for channel growth, commenting features to keep in touch with your community and see what they like or what they don't like. And you also have extensions that can help you manage your inventory, promote products, streamlining bookkeeping, and ship items across the world. Like I said, if you're like an upcoming artist trying to sell stuff, plushes, charms, physical prints, I mean, here you go. So when you're good, you can head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're good to launch go to squarespace.com slash johnny and use the code johnny to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain give yourself that professional look to make your website or business pop and again that's going to be a wrap for this spotlight once again i want to thank everyone who left me recommendations on that twitter thread that i left earlier today and again if you don't have a twitter account feel free to drop a comment below this video give me suggestions on what i can focus spotlights on it could be demos it could be small indie titles it could be early access games 
I want to focus on stuff that I don't necessarily have the time to do versus videos on, but I still want to give it attention in some form or fashion because I want to use this channel as a platform. I want to be able to give exposure to stuff big or small, even if I don't have like all the time in the world to fully commit to a full out video. But here's some links to some previous spotlights I did earlier. You can check out my thoughts on the PS5 reveal and you can also check out my spotlight on a beautiful paper smile, which is another one I think has a ton of potential and I can't wait for that game to be released. Thank you all for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic night. Wash your hands, stay safe, and do take care of yourselves. Have a good night, everybody.